Today on Morning Coffee, somebody asked me, did I think that Eminem, well, whether he was the GOAT or not. I said, I don't think so. So I'm about to display my argument as to why I don't think Eminem is the GOAT. Um, I want to know who you guys think is the GOAT. Don't put it down in the comment section. I want to let, I want to know who you guys think the GOAT is. I guess through my explanation, you're pretty much going to know who I think the GOAT is. Let's get the arguing. Me and the Notification Gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. BBN Jack Frost. What's up, party people? I so yeah. So apparently we were having a morning coffee today, and somebody asked me. I can't I can't remember their name offhand. They asked me was uh, Eminem the goat. So I had a two part answer. All right. So the first part to that answer was in this day and age that we currently live in people call everybody a goat and you can have more than one goat per, per point being is they have the yo who's on the mount rushmore basketball Did everybody remember when that debate was going around and people was like who's on the mount rushmore of rap and who's on the mount rushmore of i don't know um pro professional eating or whatever <laughs> competitive eating i mean i have no idea i, I would think it, that, that 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 one white dude and that one asian dude i'm just gonna assume that one of the guys that's really good at it is white and the other guy that's really good at it is asian just for just for purposes of the joke <laughs> i have no idea though anyway um <laughs> that's stupid Anyway, so we was having this conversation, and nowadays you can have more than one. You can have a route Mount Rushmore where you can have, you know, four or five people, maybe six or seven people that people are all saying is the GOAT. And so when the question was asked to me on whether Eminem is the GOAT, I say no. You can leave all of your answers down below, what y'all believe or what y'all think, and y'all welcome to show up to Morning Coffee and debate me on the matter. But I say he's not. I'm going to explain real quick. Um, while I'm going through this explanation, let me also say uh, use the NBA as a is as a, as a proper way to uh, show some kind of similarities, and that is one of the things that people love to say. While LeBron, you know, people who are older fans of the NBA love to say why LeBron isn't better than Jordan because they say that LeBron couldn't hold up in the time that Jordan lived, in the time that Jordan played. They say that LeBron wouldn't have been able to take up to all that physical, you know, um, you know, whatever, the physical play. Um, I think that it's much easier to say a player like Steph Curry before you can say a player like LeBron. But, you know, that's the argument that's being made because Steph Curry is way too slight and the rules had to actually be changed. And that's why he's playing better now than he did in his his rookie season because the, the rules were different. But that's neither here nor there. That's a whole nother conversation. So basically what I'm saying regarding uh Eminem situation is in this time and day and age that Eminem is rapping is if we're just going to take his skill level and what he's doing going up against these same type of going up against the rappers of the 80s would he really have stood out you had a lot of technical rapping in the 80s to the point where technical rapping now is considered to be rapidly rap when in reality it's that's back down to the core of what hip-hop was it was technical and punchlines you had to choose one or the other you was going to be either in one category or the other you was going to be a rapper with a, a crap load of punchlines i.e like a fab or you was going to be a technical rapper like an eminem now that's one point that i wanted to make um just regarding that i i, I think with we have rappers like Rakim, rappers like Big Daddy Kane, rappers like Cool G Rap. 
um, back then, you know, given that Eminem would then have to still be talking about things that was relevant back then. So the music that he was making now wouldn't be the same exact raps because he's talking about things in this now day and age in contrast with if he lived in the 80s, he would be talking about the things that happened back then. So the songs wouldn't be the same, but we can look at skill level. Make sense? So then now this comes to the biggest reason why to me Eminem could not ever be the GOAT. Because in order for you to be the GOAT, whatever style that is that you're using, you had to have originated. We don't have Eminem if we never have Rakim. We don't have Nas if we never had Rakim. We don't have a J. Cole if we never had Rakim. So when I hear people say the GOAT, and I hear people talk about who the GOAT is and who the GOAT isn't, I say, well, did they create whatever the style is that they're using? Because if they didn't, then they can't be the GOAT. That's one. Now it comes to my second point. How much better is Eminem than the people who are his contemporaries at the time of him dropping these albums? How much, how much better is he than the field around him when he's performing? And it could be an argument made that when Eminem was dropping some of his best albums, there were other rappers who was dropping albums that was as good, if not better. There can be an argument made that if somebody says Jay-Z is their best, their favorite rapper in the time that Jay-Z rapped, that over ellipse that that elap that that also covers Eminem's time being a rapper. So Jay Z, even if Eminem is better than Jay Z, which can be argued, he's not so much better than Jay Z that you can say that he stands out. Now let's take Rakim's day and age. Rakim was hands down. The best rapper of his generation. Period. He spawned. Rakim has spawned so many babies. He's he's birthed so many rappers. That there's rappers that he birthed. Because he birthed the rappers that birthed them. He's grandfathered into a lot of these guys' styles nowadays. Just to keep it a stack. You can't be a technical rapper if you don't know about Rakim. You just can't be. You could be trying, but you will not ever be able to be a technical rapper on a high level if you don't know about the Rakims and the Nas's of the world. Just my opinion. I could be wrong. Now, with all of that being said, for everybody that don't know, there's this song called Let the Rhythm Hit Him by Rakim. Go check it out. I think it came out in 89.90. That song, he was actually going at Big Daddy Kane. And there was a line in the song where he said Big Daddy Kane's name, Rakim. Big Daddy Kane found out about it because the song was played in a couple of places. And I'm guessing people was like, yo, he killed you, dog. Yo, it's bad. Like, yo, is it bad? Like, it's bad. You might not be able to come back from this. Anyway, subsequently... Kane calls Rakim and asks, asks Rakim to take his name out of the song, which Rakim did. But that just gives totally new context to that song. Rakim was going at Big Daddy Kane on Let the Rhythm Hit Him. I'm not sure if, Rock, if Big Daddy Kane dropped the album after that song came out. After that song came out, did Big Daddy Kane ever drop another album? Anybody know? Leave it down in the comments. Did Big Daddy Kane drop an album? Let's see, 1990, 91. Yeah, Big Daddy Kane probably dropped another album. I don't know. He probably did. But I know one thing for sure. He called Rakim up and asked Rakim to take his name out of a song. Now, my point being is... The best rapper in that day and age could be seen as Rakim, right? But then when you you have to literally be like, well, let's not talk about Rakim before you start naming the KRS-1s. 
who's a beast. Karis One, real quick story for everybody that don't know how much of a beast Karis One is. He was in some kind of weird rap beef with uh some soul guys, not De La Soul, some other dude, some other dudes that used to run around with like flowers and shit. I forgot forgot these guys' name. Anyway, so he runs on the stage while they're performing. I think beats them up, kicks them off the stage. And then he he takes over the rest of this show. Like, this is the type of stuff Karis wants on. <laughs> Shout out to the ex. He's from the Bronx, by the way. This is the type of shit Karis was on. I forgot who those guys' name was. I forgot who they was. But there was like some... I don't know. They was like, I don't even know how they had a beef. It don't even make sense. Anyway, he ran on stage, kicked them off stage. I got one more quick Karis one story. Um, I was at... There's this thing called uh, Rucker. If you had ever been there So I was at Rucker Park one summer Long time ago And um, there was this rapper that used to be He used to be like I guess a DJ or a VJ I don't know what the hell you call these guys He was on the radio station though And he used to have a radio show on I believe Hot 97 His name was Supernatural They used to call him Supernat His thing was is that he was the best rapper on the planet And he could just freestyle all day And he could always rap He could just rap about anything at any time He was just the nicest rapper ever So, you know, Karis One didn't like that shit So (laughs) Karis One So he was at um, Rucker performing He was gonna perform during the first game halftime And during the second game halftime During the first game halftime he performed Apparently, when he performed Karis One found out he was at the Rucker When Karis One found out how he was at the Rucker Karis One said yo I'm coming down there right now Do Super Nat bounce Karis One pulled up It was the game was over I forgot if they I don't even remember if they They, they finished that game man They might not have finished that game Anyway point being is There was a lot going on in the 80's For Rakim to have quite easily Have been the best rapper of that generation Rakim in my opinion is the GOAT because even though he had legendary and great contemporaries that he performed with at the same time that they were performing at their peaks, he stood out and it was the biggest gap between him and the next best rappers. Like, comment, subscribe, join the notification game. Hashtag Bronx Bombers, let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I got on this one. I'm out. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember, positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.